So I was playing some ranked vein game today, and before going into the actual game footage, I want to show you what happened. First, look at the scores. Seems like an average game where you won two lanes and lost one. Junglers were pretty useless on both sides, and each team had their fed star players. Now look at the damage. Azir is clearly a problem for the enemy team. But let me tell you that they were diving his passive like idiots, so it's not like he was playing spectacularly well. I mean, 9.2 is good, but nothing you don't see every day. I was 7-0 at the end, but my damage is nothing spectacular either. It's only 2k more damage than the enemy Ash that ended 0-4-0. So how did we end up winning in 19.2 minutes? No one went AFK, no one inted, nothing like that. We were able to turn a winning lane into a winning game, where I was serving as a shot caller for my team. You also have to do this. There's two crucial aspects for our win here, but let's take a look at the game. So normal farming situation with a bit of poke here and there, and we get a gank that ends up in a kill. This actually freed Warwick to help out the other lanes and forget about bot for a while. I mean, a kill on Vayne this early is enough to bully your lane opponents. But I hadn't backed yet, so I play carefully and let my support do its job, which is poking. I know Ash has no summoners, so we have all the killing potential on our side and we can still back off if need be. Ash oversteps here, greeting for two casters, and my positioning seemed very harmless here, but she has no vision on the bush and my flash is up. Now I'm 3-0 and have a 10 CS lead. Lane 1, Ash won't be a problem. We might even win 3v2 fights. So what's the plan now? What should we do? Well, being that we have such a great advantage here in the bot lane, we'll try to kill them and get first tower before top does. He's winning his lane and bullying Graves now. The lane's pushing against us, which is good because it'll force Ash and Janna to come forward if they want to farm. Janna goes into the bush and they think they're 2v1-ing me when Brand is right behind me. The fight goes really badly for them and we now focus on getting the first tower before top does, being that Darius is getting quite strong. Why not get Drake? Warwick was bot side and it would have been free with Ash dead. But always prioritize first tower over a cloud Drake. We could have backed here, but mid was open and another tower was free. No jungler, no mid, Ash bot, Janna low, and Darius was under control with two top. This is what I don't see people doing. Look at who is where and prioritize free objectives. We could have easily stayed bot and killed Ash 2v1. But why? For score? For damage output? This tower would go down and stay down. Ash would just respawn. If you get an advantage in your lane, start thinking. After you kill your lane opponent, look at the status of your game. Where can you get something permanent? A tower? A dragon? Dismiss free kills and go for free objectives. Right here, we managed to kill the bot lane again. But should we overextend bot while their jungler is alive? Why not take a free dragon until we can figure out where their jungler is? We then take the opportunity to pressure bot and once we realize we're outnumbered, we rotate and join up another fed member to try and take yet another objective. They're committing to mistakes, and this essentially allows us to get Rift free, since they're forced to defend mid and bot at the same time. None of the objectives we took so far were contested or risky, and that's all due to the fact that we had our lane 1. Now look at the game. It's 17-9. It doesn't seem that far in 1, until you notice that all their kills are on the Darius. Get him out of the picture, and it's essentially a 17-1. Now look at this, the crucial moment of the game. We had two towers, a 4k gold advantage. The minute is 1722. The game will finish at 1923, without a surrender, but a full-on nexus siege. How? Objective priority and rotation.
We have a glorified positioning here, which allows us to take yet another free tower. Darius had just backed, which gave us free time to poke Janna out of the lane, and Azir's tower here prevented any flanking from Shaco. We didn't greed dive for a 0-4-0 Ash, which couldn't defend herself. We simplified it and took down the tower permanently. Darius is actually a bad champion versus our team, because he needs to get close to be effective or he'll be able to shine in a 1v1 scenario. But as a team, with two fat people which can easily push him away, well it's sad. And he's literally the only dangerous one. We still had our rift which would tank for us and we forced it down mid without diving using our advantage. The moment Darius oversteps, we commit to killing him and the game is essentially over here. We don't care about top pushing, we can take more and more objectives. No one cared about Janna and Ash here, I mean look, they're being ignored. They're literally useless bugs here and the towers are going all the way down. By using the advantage to rotate and take objectives rather than getting more kills and milking out a one lane, we were able to finish a game in 19 minutes with a very unimpressive 20 to 9 score. Take your time to think about what and where you can be useful for your team's global objectives instead of your own personal score and watch your win rate blow upwards. I hope this video helped you out. If you liked it, then please it would help me a lot if you clicked on that like button. And if you know that you have a few friends that are in trouble and their technical capacities are good, they're getting fed, blah blah blah, but they're not winning their games, please share this video with them. I think it will help them out a ton. Sakeos out.